We are at the Dancing Goat Farm near Tampa, Florida because, well, first off, we get amazing raw goat's milk here and all kinds of other things like cheese, cottage cheese, kefir. But I'm going to introduce you to Pam in a second, who is the woman behind the show here, because we need some advice for our goats. We have no clue really what kind of goats we have other than they're small. But I, I, am, I am hoping against all odds they're not totally useless. We would love to get milk out of them. Pam thinks they are kind of useless. Pam, why are goats useless? No, it's not. <laughs> About goats, they gotta be bred uh, specific for dairy. Uh, from the pictures, they look to be boar and pygmy crosses and probably not what you would want uh, for dairy goats. Number one, they don't give enough to make it worthwhile to milk them. And even in one to two quarts of milk a day, it's just, you know, I think your family will consume way more than that. And uh, you, you want to have a dairy goat that's a real dairy goat. And a boar is considered a meat goat. Uh, also, a pygmy is considered a meat goat, although they do give a good high quality milk, what little bit they do give of it. But I am a snot. I raised French Alpines. I raised La Mancha, Sonnens, and we have that fourth breed, oops, the buck jumped the fence. And that buck that jumped the fence makes for some very hardy goats. They may be crossbred, but they're very hardy. Okay. All right. So here's the deal. We show up to this property. If you're new to our channel, we show up to this property that we bought in Florida in, from Washington State. Okay. We're living in Washington State. We find this property and it came with goats and cows. And, you know, no offense to the people who got these animals, but they were meant for lawn ornaments basically i think for pictures and videos for a wedding venue slash airbnb they were not chosen for purpose for for actual homesteading production purpose now as many of you know we did castrate the bull i don't know what we're going to do with him if he brings in enough money on youtube he gets to live probably if he doesn't my husband wants to turn him into hamburgers but that's that's a table discussion now we have these two female goats that originally I guess we've heard the sellers, the people we bought from, the original folks who got this thought they were boys because they named them Tom and Brady. But if you look underneath them, it's pretty obvious they're girls. So we've got two females. Obviously, together, they can't really do much. I know in today's world, we think that they can. But no, in the animal world, you've got to actually have a guy and a girl to, to breed. So Pam has some males, so originally we were thinking, hey, maybe one of Pam's males before she castrates them would be good addition and we could start breeding and doing dairy, but hers are a lot bigger. So Pam, why do you feel like our goats are not going to do well with your male goats? Because my male goats are going to be a lot bigger than what your goats are. And, and why is that bad? Well, it's not really bad, but it will throw babies that are large for those does to be able to produce them. Generally, when you uh, breed a larger goat with a smaller goat then you end up with a smaller doe the baby will tend to be more on the doe side uh, so you have that going for you so yeah there's pros and cons you got to kind of weigh this out uh, so you have the the smaller uh, doe that might produce a smaller baby for the beginning and then they will grow larger as time goes on uh, so that tends to happen I would be reluctant to do that because it's just not something I chance because when that baby is born, uh, it might be too big. I mean, and it could cause problems and kill the actual doe that's trying to deliver it. Mm -hmm. Therein is your problem. Okay. So again, Pam thinks our goats are worthless and- Oh, I didn't say that. <laughs> she basically did. <laughs> but her suggestion was just to give them away. I mean, call me crazy. I don't love giving up on I, I i like the outcasts if you follow my news channel you know that i interview outcasts i i have a heart for the outcasts and the dissenters the downtrodden not to say these goats are downtrodden but i did look up on the internet that it did say that pygmy goats can produce a high quality milk it's just not a lot of it i don't want them to just get thrown off to some auction where they're you know in a terrible situation i don't know i mean that's one of the reasons why i didn't haul the bull off and like I say, keep saying I, 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 I do consult Lynn a lot with these decisions, but he has made me, he has sort of made me animal husbandry manager at this point because he has way too many other things to deal with. So as I've been researching this, you know, I didn't send the bull off to, to an auction because I'm like, you know, I just, I'm not really big into like the factory food system. I don't really want to contribute it to it if I don't have to. I'd like to find a purpose for these goats. I just, 
maybe you have an idea in the comment section, but uh, Pam, since I have you here and you know so much about goats, if I make this like, hey, beginner tips for I want to get into goat milk farming, what are your like top tips for, for what people should consider? Know what you're doing before you get into it. Uh, I have a lot of people, they go to the auction, they go buy a baby, and the breeder doesn't support them, and then they pick up the phone and call me at 1130 at night when they've got problems. It's not my problem. You're the one that bought a goat without knowing what you're doing. You're the one that picked from a breeder that sold you the $50 goat because they wanted to get rid of it because it was probably sick to get it out the door. You're contributing to the problem when you start that. Before I ever got my first goat, I studied goats for two full years before I got my first two boys, which are very low maintenance, the boys are. And uh, so I, I knew what I was doing walking into it. And that's the biggest thing that people don't do. They don't research. They don't know what they're doing. They don't uh, have a clue what's going on. They don't know about testing for diseases. They don't know about getting the appropriate type of goat for what they want it for. My biggest concern with you is the horns. Uh, that's, I just, horns scare me to death. If you notice any of our goats back here, they are, uh, they do not have horns. We burn them off at 10 to 14 days old. I tell everybody it's 30 seconds of agony for a lifetime of safety. They can hook themselves into a fence and they hang there in the middle of September and you come out here two hours later and find them dead. That's not a way to go for a goat. So that's why I hate horns. I can tell you how to get those horns off and there are ways of doing it. It is long, it is tedious, and it will work, but it's not what I do here. Okay, any other tips? Uh, know what you're doing. Just don't buy on impulse. Uh, people get them, and you wanna, it costs the same amount of money to feed a mutt goat as it would a purebred goat. When you sell those kids, you're gonna get money for the pure, better money for the purebreds than you are for a mutt goat you know, without papers, without anything. I sell my boys without papers because uh, unless they're a boy that I would keep as a stud muffin on my farm, I'm really not gonna sell them. In your case, I know what you want to do with them so it's not showing, it's not uh, resales, it's not anything like that. So I have some boys that are, uh, they're not gonna have papers. They are La purebred La Manchas, but they're not gonna have papers. I won't sell with them and they would be okay to go for that. They're quality goats. But when you start getting from the auction and you start getting from backyard breeders that they're, they don't know what they're doing, you don't necessarily yeah. get good quality lines. It's, uh, I have one here, Daria. Her daddy's also her granddaddy. <laughs> we really messed up there. It took about 30 days before she got a suckle in, instinct to her. So when you do things like that, you can screw it up. Her daughter's daddy is also her uncle. And I mean, twice in one family. <laughs> Knock on wood, we haven't done it for anybody else here. But uh, Daria milks like a cow because her daddy threw heavy milkers. And so we have that going for us. But we had problems in the beginning because she was almost like a, an autistic or a Down syndrome goat. You know, she just didn't come around for a long time. And now she's the sweetest thing. She is the easiest to deal with. She gives us no problems whatsoever on the milk stand. But she just... Uh, she had problems in the beginning. So, but we, we know what we're breeding and we breed quality. Okay. All right. So if you're in the Tampa area, check out Pam at the Dancing Goat. If you're not interested in doing your own milk, this is a great second option. We would love to not drive 90 minutes uh, all the time, but we do it for Pam. And uh, I don't know. Stay tuned. We'll see what happens with our goats. If I okay? had to do over and I was just getting milk. I never own goats. <laughs> there you go. So the best advice is don't do it. <laughs>